Hey guys, welcome back from Classic Work. Since I've had so many people interested in the old two-ton truck, I made that video kind of as a whim to uh, see if anybody was interested in it, and we've got a lot of people, so uh, a long overdue video. I do apologize for that, but uh, we're going to get back into it today. Got to tackle the back brakes now, and I'm going to try to get all the boxes off. So that's going to be kind of the schedule for today. So I got to let the outriggers down on this bad boy, and we'll go from there. So stay tuned. It's going to be good. I don't know if you can see it, there's some plenty of oil running out of that cylinder. That seal is gone. So that's the other stuff we got to do. But we got it higher up and enough in the air, I believe. So we can take the uh, wheels off. I think I can let this side down just a little bit. And don't worry, I'm, I'm going to put safety stands up under that. I, I'm not going to get up under that. Anything could happen. So. Let's lower this side just a little bit. Huh, it's got safety on it. You can't lower it unless the PCO's running. That's nice. That's pretty cool, actually. Alright, I guess we'll just have to deal with it as it is. Well, this is a familiar side, is it not? Look at a stack of springs. Good lord. That's a weight carrying son of a gun right there. That's interesting. They, they weld that? Oh, that's it's not welded to the frame of the truck. This is a brace right here. Looks like it was added on later to brace the crane. But uh, it's homemade and like it's not doing a very good job. There's a huge crack back here which they've tried to patch a couple of times. Probably because they were trying to pick the front half of the truck up with the crane. These pads here are pretty wore out. They've been rubbing too. It's one thing I didn't get is any pads. So looks like we're gonna have to get some. Alright. I'm not going to film a whole lot of this because I've got a video on doing the front brakes. I'll probably do a little bit of time lapse kind of stuff on stuff like this so you don't get bored of tears watching me cuss at brakes. But uh, yeah, just to give you an idea of the back, I get a lot of people talk about my safety methods, you know, question stuff I do. That's fine. I don't, you know, safety is a big thing. and. And yeah, I don't always play by the rules, but this ball jack that's holding this rear end up, you gotta remember, it's not holding the rear end up. The outrigger that's behind the camera right now is holding the outrigger up, or holding the truck up. This is just there for safety. And it's it's not, you know, a safety stand or anything like that, but that's better than nothing, so. Tell you what. You know it's bad when you gotta work on your own stuff to work on your own stuff. You know what I mean? Uh, my air compressor just decided it was just gonna quit working. Wasn't no gas getting to the carburetor. Something stopped up in one of the uh, one of the jets. Had to run it a half choke on. But uh, what I was getting at is I've been amazed how easy this truck is to work on. I put no heat on this, no penetrating oil. Let's see how easy it breaks. <clears throat> it came right off. But, I mean, it looks crusty as it can be, but it, it it's coming apart. You know what I mean? And that's that's unusual for, especially for older stuff. When it's set, 
a long time, nothing moves. I mean, nothing. And I put a little heat on these. If you remember from my previous video on the truck, we had one of them blow up. I didn't put near as much heat on it this time. But uh, it came right off, it popped off like it wasn't nothing. So I've been impressed how well this truck, how easy it is to work on. And you know, we're sitting up under the truck right now. We, I couldn't even set a camera up under, you know, my 550 and you can forget about doing that on, on, you know, a passenger vehicle or something like that. But it's unreal. It really is how easy this thing is to work on. Well, no wonder I didn't have no rear brakes. Oh, take a look at that. Inside pad, it was almost wore out, but look at this. That is some kind of tore up. I'm just petrified, I do believe. Yeah, I think we got new calipers. Well, we got some new shoes for the old girl, and it already looks better, making the whole truck look bad now. But we're well on our way. All the brakes are bled out now, and it stops a hundred percent better now, so that's great. Um, a couple other things I figured out. I don't know if some of y'all remember from the last episode on this truck, we kept hearing a bunch of clanging, and I thought that was coming from the emergency brake, or possibly that brake that was hanging up on the uh, driver's side rear wheel. Well, actually, after I fixed the brakes, it was still making that noise, and we finally figured out what's going on here. Let me get up on here so I can show you. Right here on this hanger bearing, see how low this yoke is sitting? It's rubbing the hanger bearing right here, so the, the rubber, vulcanized rubber that holds this bearing is finally deteriorated. And, uh, uh, allowing it to rub the hanger bearing, so just need a new hanger bearing, so that's a real easy fix. The mercy brake still works. I got the mercy brake on right now, it's holding the truck back, which is really cool. I like this system a lot better. Uh, they have more or less a drum there that's got a shoe in it, just like a regular truck, except it's on the drive shaft instead of being on the uh, rear brakes. Like back there, can you see? There we go. So, to me, that's a lot better system. My 550 has got the uh, locking drums on the inside, even though it has disc brakes itself. But in order to replace them, you have to take the entire hub off of the uh, truck. So I don't like that. That's a really poor design, if you ask me. But uh, other than that, I'm not sure what size axle or rear end this is, rather than axle. I th I'm pretty sure it's 20,000 GBW. But, uh, Explain somebody please explain this to me. This drive shaft is tiny compared to the truck. Like, you know, drive shaft diameter, this might be three inch. I'm not sure what wall thickness this is, but that's only about an inch and a half yoke shaft there. But the universal joints are huge in this thing. I mean they're ginormous. They're not quite semi-class, but they are, you know, two-ton class. But uh, I just want to know how in the world they got away with that. You know, I guess I've never seen one of these break, you know, up in here. I've seen them break at the, at the joints a lot of times, but somebody out there might please explain that a little bit to me because I, I don't really understand how they can get away with such a small drive shaft. And it holds up, apparently. I mean, but... Most two ton trucks I see, they got at least a four, if not four and a half inch drive shaft on them. Just wonder if International knew something that uh, other folks didn't. But other than that, yeah, it's looking pretty good. Got a lot of dirt and stuff up under the frame, but here's the filter for the, uh, looks like the hydraulics. I didn't realize it was right there, to be honest. I thought it was closer to the pump. There's the pump. But yeah, got a lot of cosmetic wear and tear on it but i think a lot of the oil leakage that's been going on here has kind of helped it <laughs> not deteriorate so much but anyways enough of that i was just gonna just point that out for y'all the next step we're gonna have is taking all the boxes off of it that's what i'm gonna be doing today now some of these boxes will open 
Well, I'll say that. Yeah, I could have swore some of them would open. But anyways, they got to come off. Some of them have mounting bolts on them. On the side, like this one does, some of them are going to have to torch off. So, let's get after it. Not planning on saving any hardware, so I'm going to torch the bolts off. Unless they're being a pain. Neil can give it some persuasion. Now the old girl just looks like a flatbed with a big crane on it. It's uh, it's looking a lot better. Brand new wheels and tires and no 
trashy looking boxes on the back of it really really helped it out so now the next thing I didn't realize that the uh, the cover here comes off it came off really easy actually it just kind of lifts off but uh, I thought this was gonna be a bear to get to some of this hydraulic stuff but it doesn't look all that bad uh, might need some especially line wrenches to get up in there but uh, I every time I look at this truck I'm more and more impressed how easy it is to work on I thought for certain that I was gonna have to come in through the bottom here and I, I don't know what I was gonna do I really didn't know but it doesn't look like it's gonna be that bad um, you know getting all the plumbing straightened out most of the hoses look pretty good I know they look nasty it's because this valve I'm sure some of these o-rings and these uh proportion valves here are leaking and that's why they all look crusty and nasty looking and you got to remember this truck is old as I am so it, it's done pretty good really good actually but anywhere that the Sun has hit these lines it has just absolutely destroyed them this line here is not it's probably newer than, than most of these that are in here so uh, it's gonna take some doing the ones on the crane especially up here up top they are dry rotten as a son of a gun so lots of hoses it's gonna be a nightmare I'm sure by the time it's all said and done but I was glad to see that all that is good I talked about cutting these off these right here they're supporting the uh, top half of the crane I'm still gonna do that I had a guy comment out there about that about you know it's going to lose a lot of support what i meant by that when i cut these off i'm going to put something in their place just they take up a lot less room we may make some i don't know maybe eight inch gussets really really long some pretty good thick plate maybe half inch or three quarter and run up the side here you know to the bottom of where the shield goes on you know and they'll stick out about that far and we may put you know two at an angle like pitched out and then one in the middle so I think that'll more than suffice for these big long ones here and all this weld you can see there's a crack right here you can my camera will focus on it it may not I'll get some better images of it but all this has got to be cut out because this is dangerous I mean crack right here running up the side we may have to cut this piece off and, and once again put you know big gusset back here to the back but that's that's gonna be a future thing right there that we're definitely not gonna be doing that in, in this series right now at least but what I was getting at is we've got to work on these cylinders this one right here and the main boom one up here they're leaking terribly so I've come to the decision I'm not going to tear them down in the shop what we're going to do is build a platform on the back of the truck here I've been wanting to do this for a long time with the 550 but it I don't want to make it any longer because it I don't think it can handle it the bed's not strong enough so I'm going to do it to this truck so we're going to make a platform work platform that's probably I don't know 30 inches out and it's going to be fairly thick I mean it's, it's not gonna be just like a shelf it's actually gonna come down and box in the bottom so I may can put tools inside of it like some stuff that you usually keep in the back of your truck you know regularly like uh, I'd love to be able to put a floor jack under there and uh, you know take the handle out of course but you know big stuff that you don't want it to get weathered but it'd be okay if it got some rain on it or something you know it's not gonna hurt it so and sledgehammers and, and big pry bars and stuff like that so my plan is if you follow me here we're going to come out from this nice piece of toolbar it goes all the way to here we're going to drop down a couple inches and come out so there's like a step there come out here at about 30 inches box it all in probably put some plate around it and we'll inset the lights the back lights on there and put a trailer hitch in it so that's the plan as for the little platform we're going to do away with it that's going to be like a 90 degree deal that's going to fit all in there so just to give you an idea of what we're about to do i don't have any plans on this i'm building it by eye like most of the stuff that i do so just bear with me guys but anyways we have made some significant progress on the truck i'm really really pleased in how it's going 
So <laughs> just keep after it, I reckon. So I'm gonna cut up some some really nice tube I've got and see what we're gonna do, how I'm gonna piece it in there. So let's take a look at it. Okay guys, I got my, my basic box structure complete here that I'm going to do. I'm still going to have some stuff internally done here. I might set my tail lights right in this area right here. Right now I'm working on the hitch. I'm going to put a two inch receiver in here just like you know a normal truck. And I've got it so that I've got lots of ground clearance between here and the ground. The rear end is still lower than this, so we're good as far as you know getting high centered or anything like that. Now then, I want to strengthen this area to uh, to accommodate for the hitch. So what I've done is I've taken two pieces of three inch here and I've cut a miter on them. I don't know if you can see that real well, How about like that. So I've cut a miter and I've done it on both ends in the same direction, the same plane. So this is a 30 degree cut, same thing on the other side, it's just parallel, it's almost like a trapezoid and a round pipe. So the cool thing about this, doing this, as long as you've got two parallel flats that uh, you can twist them a fair amount and get you an angle brace coming off of here and it won't be just you know straight up, straight up and back, it'll actually have some some triangular bracing in it more or less it's kind of like how roll cages and stuff are built um, it'll be very very strong in in a pressure or not really pressure but in tension this way and pulling from this direction as well so 
we're going to put them in there just like that. We got a really good solid mount to mount to. And this will go straight to the hitch on the back. So all I got to do is tack in my hitch right here. That way I don't get in the way of any bracing I want to put on the bottom here. And we'll be ready and we'll be set. We'll go ahead and stick all these on here and they'll look really, really good. So let's get after it. thing I hate about YouTube that I can't do and I've tried for years is to get a good arc shot that's just something that I can't do I just I don't know if anybody knows where I can find a good arc camera or somebody that's made a really good arc camera like homemade let me know send me a link something because I would love to show you all some stuff but uh, anyways what we've got here is a huge gap I'm going to show you how to uh, fill this in and it won't take you 30 minutes to do a joint like this. You know, I can do this here in five minutes. So, I'm going to show you all some old school techniques. Okay, I'm going to give you some Texas TIG lessons real quick. This is something I really hadn't discussed, but it's something I run into all the time. Now, I've got a guy, or a good friend, that donated these rods to me. These are 8010s. I think these are 5 32nd. They're pretty big. But uh, they got wet. As you can see, the uh, the coat, the uh, flux is coming off of them. So get you one of them, get you a chipping hammer, and just knock all the flux off of it, pretty much. It's not a real big deal. Just knock it off a little at a time. You go and when they get wet it's the, the flux that gets burnt the metal doesn't you know as long as the metal's still nice and clean there's nothing wrong with it so anyways what we're going to do is just pretty much take another rod and our stinger and strike up here on this corner and use this as a filler rod more or less just like tig and just go right over it. and i can do this whole joint here in one pass so Texas TIG is kind of frowned upon, you know, absolutely don't do anything structural with it, you know, something that's that's got a code that it needs to weld to and all that jazz, but for something like this, this is going to, well, this is going to have load on it, I'm not going to say that it doesn't, but I'm going to be putting at least three other passes of 7018 on top of this, so it'll be extremely strong when I get done with it. It's just filling up that gap. That's the problem that we've got right now. If I were to try to do that with a 6010, I'd be here uh, a little while to get it filled in, but doing it with this method, you know, like that, it'll go really, really quickly. So it's a good technique. It's good on thin material. It's good on crappy material. It's super rusty or dirt or whatever. It works really good on that. So let's get to it. I got a 1-8-60-10 here, our 5-30-second, 80-10, it could be whatever rod, it could be a 70-18 or whatever, it's just, I have a bunch of these rods that are burnt that are good for this, so here we go, eyeballs.
Well, my heart started wandering there in the middle, so I got a little bit of cold. That ain't no big deal. There you go, one rod. That would have taken me probably three rods. If I'd done it the traditional way. So you can grind that out to give you a little bit better geometry for your next pass. Matter of fact, I might do that. All right, you see, I got my geometry a little better, and we'll just run over that with a 7018. Easy fix. We've jumped ahead a little bit now. This is more than I actually wanted to go over, but I thought this would be some pretty good footage for y'all to see. Anyways, I've gone ahead and uh, got a top on here now. This is three quarter plate. I think it's six foot long and I think it's 26 inches wide. A little more than two foot. Maybe 30 inches wide. It's pretty wide, but I like it. It's good height. I'm tall, so it sits up probably I had to measure and see, but I bet that's every bit of 40 inches. That's really far away from the ground. So I'm like it. Anyways, y'all probably noticed I've got the drive shaft out of the truck. The uh, hanger bearing. Remember all that clacking that we had back and uh, when I was bringing the truck home? Yeah, this is what was doing it. It was actually rubbing, if you can see here, it was rubbing the, the yoke right here or not significant it ain't enough to you know hurt anything but if i'd have kept running it it definitely would have uh, put a damper on that but anyways we got to get the uh hanger bearing off the reason i took the whole drive shaft out uh because i really didn't have to do it to do this but i wanted to work on the emergency brake since uh it's shot too and i thought it'd be just as easy just to take the drive shaft out and i'm thinking about replacing some of these yokes or not the yokes but the uh u-joints so that one there feels pretty good this one over here was pretty rough I just taking it off you can see it had some definite rust on it it felt pretty rough on there so that's what i've been doing anyways let's knock this thing off all right let's see if we can get that yoke off get a puller on it. I swore it was moving. I well, guess it didn't stop. I'll have to get a puller on that one. Alright, take two. Let's see if this little puller's got enough balls to pull it out. Oh yeah, easy. Drive shaft wouldn't be trying to spin on me. There we go. She's out now. There we go. Oh, we 
tore up the hanger bearing pretty good, looks like. Now, getting that thing off is going to be a challenge, I believe. Maybe not. Alright. Still got to get this off. Uh, I don't know if there's enough meat there for that puller to grab at. We'll try it. Okay, take three. Now I got the three jaw on there. Ain't it nice when stuff works? There. Now then. I can mic that and find my hanger bearing. That was a lot harder than that should have been. Alright, let's mic this dude. See what we got. These are my favorite mics I think I've ever used. These are Blackhawk. These actually belong to my uh, to my uncle. I may have to buy these from him one day. But uh, they're zero to threes with uh, removable anvils on them, which I'm not a fan of that, but it's real handy on these. And they're really accurate. Let's see what we got. Seven fifty plus twenty one. It's gonna be right at one, two, three, four, four minus seven seventy five. Gonna be right at one point seven seven one, I believe. Be about right, 771. Well, I need to look at the chart and see if they've got one of them. Well, if you can read that, probably can't, it's too much glare. But yeah, they got one, 1 1.771. That's gonna be it. Cool. It's good stuff. All right. Had dead gum dirt daubers build nests in all the holes on this yoke back here, so I had to go back and retap them out. There we go. Tell you what, y'all don't know about these these things are the greatest things since sliced bread doesn't have to be a Milwaukee I just have a lot of their cordless tools but uh yeah, get your eight point socket real good for chasing threads. You know, it ain't got enough power, it'll break something, which I really like. But uh, I used to hate the air driven ones and things that hurt you and things that get a catch in them and man, they about break your wrist. But I like the little electric ones. They're really, really, they're not real powerful and that's a good thing. We'll get all these holes retapped out. We'll put the drive shaft back in. I already got the Everything rebuilt on it, so we should be in good shape. Cardboard. Alright. Alright. I got a 
office. Drive shaft. Uh, all right, let's be sure we got everything. We got her all ready in that hand. Turn for me. There you go. That was a lot easier than I thought it would be. Sure, you got your cap centered up pretty good. Oh boy, there you go. Sorry, my knee's in the way. the shot. Oh, I didn't mean it purpose, purposely. Drop one. I think it'll stay there. There you go. That's how you put half a drive shaft in by yourself. say the front side was worse because I had to deal with the exhaust pipe being in the way but uh it was just like this so wasn't too bad job successful Don't forget to check them with something a little bit stronger. You do not want these things coming out. Believe me, I know from experience. Well guys, I got the uh, drivetrain all sorted away now. I got the U-joints put in and I finally got the emergency brake figured out. That took some doing to get all that worked out, but we're getting there. We're getting slowly, slow as a snail crawling on salt, but we're getting there. One thing I was going to show you is I picked up a nice new welding machine the other day. I was uh, eating lunch and I was going through Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace and everything and I found this welder not far from me. And uh, this is an SA250 if you can't read it, which is a, they're good machines. The biggest reason I got this one is it's a diesel. This one here has got the three cylinder Perkins on it. I've worked on a fair amount of these motors and they're really, really good. Really tough, real reliable. Once again, this, uh, just like the motor in this truck it's all mechanical there's no there's no computers or anything on there so that's going to be fantastic it um it does have you know electronic idler on it which you know a lot of welders do sa 200s including the biggest difference between this machine and an sa 200 for instance not only being a diesel machine it has an ac armature on it which arguably uh, well quality, you know, differs a fair amount depending on what kind of machine you have. But I welded with this machine and it is fantastic. It is uh, got a lot less hours on it than my 200. 
Um, I think this one's got 4,300 hours, which is no problem for the machine. I think Urza, my old 200, she's got well over 10,000, so they're uh, good machines. Um, whoever had this has taken very good care of it. All the gauges and everything still work on it, which is a, a big step up for me. So I'm looking forward to running her. But you can tell this is a monster of a machine sitting on this on this deck here. That's not where it's going to go. I'm going to mount it, hopefully, right here. I'm going to build some spacer blocks so I can get the machine up just a t tad. It don't need to be any taller, but I need some way to drain the oil out of it. Um, the method I used to use on my 200, I made a hydraulic hose for it to drain it out the bottom of, you know, up under the the uh, bed and it worked fine but it just it takes so long is the biggest problem but uh if i get it up in the air a little bit i think that'll help and also when you go to pressure wash your your bed off leaves and stuff love to get up under these machines you know it's just perfect spot for them to get into and, and that way you got a nice clean shot you can clean all that out of there any oil or fuel or anything like that leaked on there you can get it all out so that's my plan for that but uh Great machine starts up first lick. We'll crank her up. <laughs> of course, she's not bolted down. But 75 PSI on the oil pressure, which is average for a uh, for a Perkins, which is really good. And uh, yeah, sweet running machine. You can tell it's got a little shaky achy to it, but that's not a big deal. My 200 used to shake my whole truck apart, so that's nothing new for me. Sounds good though, and it's going to match the truck beautifully for his uh, being old school. So. Next thing to tackle. I don't think I talked about this either. I got this uh, big piece of plate that I put on here for the top. This is a piece of three quarter inch, huge piece. That's 19 millimeter for everybody else out there. Six foot long, two meters across, and roughly a meter wide, about three feet. Uh, well, I think it's a little shorter. Around 30 inches, I think. Real, real good solid workbench. I got to finish welding up on it, stitching it up. I've got to get some new lights. Uh, I thought these were going to work, but they're not. So I'm going to have to redo something on that. But uh, it's going to look slick. Next thing we're going to tackle, guys, is the crane. So I know a lot of people have been waiting on that. But we're getting there. I'm sorry it's taking so long. But uh, we're going to get after it. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some good. To all my fellow subscribers out there, I, I do want to apologize for this video being nine months late pretty much uh we're gonna get there i got a lot of more videos coming i'm getting recently getting back into it and i'm gonna have a video dedicated to what's happened to me in the last year pretty much so without any further ado guys i'll see y'all next time y'all take care